everyone. See everybody getting logged in here. If Captain Garrison, I see Shelby Ceiling fan, Jerry Polk, Anthony, Marcy, Taryn, Mercy, Grace, good to see you guys. Man, Sand Springs has been killing it on this uh, this week. Y'all are awesome. Mm. The newest praise band in the division. Got Josh Powell, Anthony, good, Talitha, great. And then, and then a giant coffee mug. Well, it's good to see you all here. Uh, we may have some more people drift on um, as we go, but uh, we're going to get started. I think most of you that I'm looking at were probably at our workshop a couple years ago, with the exception of, of Grace and, and Mercy and maybe Talitha, uh, where we were able to be with uh, Randy Bonifield for, for the week weekend. Um, it was an incredible um, weekend of praise and worship. I was thinking today, there are songs, uh, Randy, that you introduced us to that weekend that were we sang probably within the last couple of months at the core, at least. Um, uh, obviously, your tune, Come Sing for Joy. Um, I Love the Lord, that great Tommy Walker oh, tune. Yeah. We've done that divisionally quite a bit. Um, and I can hardly get through an Easter without doing Come Behold the Wondrous Mystery. Uh, uh, so yeah. those are all ones that we sang with Randy uh, that weekend. Um, and then just some of the great things that he's had to say. So we, we're really excited to have Randy with us um, uh, here virtually. We want to get him back in person at, uh, at, at some point. Um, but uh, uh, we're, we're excited to have him here in this format. Um, if you, I, I'm sure, again, that most of you guys know, know Randy. He's written uh, uh, things that we've sung, uh, uh, Father Fan the Flame, which is in the songbook. Uh, Randy, uh, you've also written some, uh, some film stuff as well. You've done several film scores. Um, uh, so, so Randy knows, uh, knows what he's doing, and uh, he's, he's a man of God, and I'm really looking forward to hearing what he has to say. Um, I think that... Uh, I, um, Randy is probably comfortable with some interaction here. So if you guys have questions or something and you want to speak up, um, then uh, feel free to hop in and, and uh, pick his brain and, and see where this goes. So Randy, we're going to turn it over to you now. Guys, if you want to, you can uh, go to Randy's screen and click on it and pin him and make him bigger if you want or, or um, however you want to do. But you'll be able to see him a little better if you do that. So Randy, it's all yours. All right. Hey, and, and just to reiterate what uh, he's saying, that these, uh, these kind of calls and these kinds of presentations can be a little weird uh, just to sit and watch. And uh, so as I'm doing this, please, if you have a question or uh, if there's some, some, something I can address, uh, please, you know, uh, or, or clarify might be a better word. Let me know. Um, my, uh, I'm not an expert at this, I will tell you that. I don't consider myself an expert. I just consider myself very experienced in it. Done it a long time. Uh, I don't, you know, there, there are some people in this world who I highly respect who are really prolific songwriters. Um, and uh, and they are, they're much more disciplined in the way in which they write. So I'm gonna come at it from my per perspective, but also give you some ideas and how that you can explore uh, writing. So let me first by first begin by asking, I just to pose this question. It's, it's like, why do we want to write songs? You know, why, why should I begin to write songs? Um, and for me, it was, it wasn't really a difficult thing. It, it, when I was young, I listened to uh, primarily singer songwriters. Uh, and so for you to be a musician and have any sort of band or whatever, you were writing your own songs. That's, that was just part of it. Uh, it seemed silly to me to just be in a band where you played other people's songs. Uh, and so, so, so from that perspective, or for that reason, I started uh, writing at a very young age. I was probably about 14. I could hardly play the piano, but as much as I could play, I would begin to write my own things. Um, and so I think when we ask the question, why do I want to write, it's oftentimes there, there, I kind of came up with three different reasons why we do that. One is for that reason to be, to be original. Um, so not to just be parroting or, uh, or, or, or expressing other people's words, but, but your own words, your own ideas. Um, the second reason I think is because you particularly have something to say. And you want to say it artistically. You want to say it creatively. 
Uh, and then um, you the the other reason might be that you've heard there's money in it, and that if you write a good <laughs> song, you can make a lot of money uh, if it gets picked up by the right person. Um, I can tell you, in my experience, that's not been true. But uh, you know, who knows? It it could happen to you. Um, it, it there are many stories about people who've done that, just that. So. So we asked the question, what is really, what are the basic ideas of a song? And I know that uh, some of you here might have never written a song before, and some of you have. And so I don't want to dumb this down too much, but I think we have to ask the question, what really is a song? What makes up a song? And probably the best way for me to describe it is in certain musical terms, like melody, harmony, rhythm, and lyric. If you put those four things together, you pretty much... Those are the elements of a song. Melody, harmony, I'm sorry, melody, harmony, rhythm, and lyric. Yeah, those are the four. Uh, and so if you think about it that way, it's a combination of all, it's all those things coming together um, to, in one package. And that package can look very different. Um, but those things are all elements that must be involved in this. And, uh, and we all have our strengths when it comes to songwriting. When we come up, when we're coming up, when we're coming up with ideas, Oftentimes, we will find that we have certain strengths, and, uh, and, and you need to know your strengths and know your weaknesses and all that sort of thing. So this is a song. Song has a melody, harmony, lyric, rhythm, um, and, and I could give you an example, like even if I were to say in Christ Alone, which is a very familiar uh, song to folks, the melody is... Uh, So you've got that right, you've got that melody. Then you've got a harmony, which is sort of the, the structure behind it. So you've got movement of chords happening. And then you've got the rhythm, which is bum, bum, ba da, ba, ba, ba da. And then rhythmically, the, the chord changes and the chord structure could have its own thing as well. And then there's a lyric that goes on with it. In Christ alone, my hope is found. Right? All right, so all, all four of those things combined make a song. And uh, they, all, these, the, all those things combine for many reasons. You, you might want to tell a story or to share a feeling, to communicate a message, convey a truth, convey your truth, uh, share an emotion uh, as a means of celebration. And when I think about songs in general, uh, I often think of them in with a lot of C words, which are like, I use songs for communion. When I mean communion, it's like, uh, it's communication between me and God. So when I, when I sit down to play, it's an extension of my devotional life. So it's not just a, it's not just a, a, a discipline of writing something. Most of my songs come out of that time where I'm just sitting down playing and singing what's in my heart, and sometimes a song emerges. emerges. So it's communion or it's community. Like uh, if you think about how a song in corporate worship uh, unifies us as believers and we sing these songs together, there's a sense of community to it. Um, and uh, sorry, uh, and then there's a sense of, there's also this idea of commerce that, that songs do make money and they generate income for a lot of people. A, a way to communicate one another. It's, it's also a common creed. Uh, that's where, when we think about how we sing theology, um, that's our common creed. So songs have a lot of different purposes and a lot of different reasons in which, uh, which they, or why they exist. And so I think one of the questions you begin to ask as you start to write songs, or if you've been writing songs, is what, what, where do my songs fit in all of that? And, and how, do I want to, uh, how do I want to continue to write? Where do I want to, to find my niche? Um, and so to go from here, so with that as the preamble, I want to ask the question then of how do you write? And if... Uh, if there's anybody here who actually does write songs, I'd love to hear how it is that you sit down to write a song. Is, is there a process that you use when you write? I'm going to take a drink while we're at it. Anyone? Yeah, does anybody want to chime in here? This would be, I know there's some of you who have done some songwriting, 
it'd be great to hear from. I'm going to speak just because no one else oh. did. <laughs> uh, it's not my gift, although I have written songs. Uh, but somebody told me once, Randy, and I'm happy for you to dispel this myth, that the perfect song is lyrics first, melody next, then harmony. But I think there's a lot of songwriters that reverse that or mix that up. Uh, but I have tried to hold uh, to that, tried to get the lyrics, which is obviously the most important part. Uh, done first and then the melody which of course is crucial and then you harmonize from that but i'd be interested in your take on the order of those three elements yeah yeah you know i i think that there's truth to both i you know i hate to i wouldn't i would never uh say one is better than the other i would say that the lyric is a very important aspect of the song which when a person is a melody writer or they start with music first oftentimes those the words can come second and 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 don't have the same power or this and and i, I would tell you that is it has been actually one of my weaknesses i am a music writer first i i come up with ideas musically first and uh if i can't find the lyric to fit there the song kind of falls apart it goes away um and so i i do feel like the lyric is a is is such a vital piece in writing that uh, a song may go unfinished if it never had, if it wasn't birthed from the lyric. Oftentimes, if there's a lyric in front of you, uh, it's really easy to write because there are words to go go with and, and move forward with. So, well, that would be one of the questions, you know, uh, so how am I going to write? Or if I've never written, what do I think that process looks like? How am I going to do this if I've never done it before? And, and, and I, I would tell you, if you are a writer, I want you to, I want you to take some time and evaluate, you know, how you write, how, how is it that I am writing? Because, uh, because that, that's, you know, as you continue to grow as a writer, it's important for you to think about those things. Now there are different, there are different approaches to writing. And I, I have to tell you, one of the, one of the main hangups with writing is that you have uh, you can approach it either from an idea of process or product. I think a, a lot of people, I, I hate to narrow it down to just two ways, but if you're approaching, oftentimes there are people who just love the process of creativity. And, mm -hmm. and the, the, because, it's, because it's this creative outlet that the process is just as important as what ends up coming out of it. Um, I've never been that kind of writer. I've always been the product kind of writer where I, as I'm writing, I'm thinking about what's going to happen to it when it's done. How is it going to be sung on a Sunday or how is it going to be recorded or uh, any, anything like that? Or, or who am I going to give this to to have them sing? Um, so you have to be careful that that doesn't become a hang up for you. Because if you're only thinking about product, uh, you're missing out on some of the growth that happens as a writer. So, so if you think about a process, it's kind of a means of creativity. It's life-giving. It just, it, it fulfills you just from a standpoint of that you're being creative. And growth is, is part of your product. It's growing as, a, as an artist uh, in what you do. If, if, if product is your end goal, you you recognize that when you're writing you need a purpose and so if that's how you if that's how you think make sure you 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 recognize why i'm doing this it's for this purpose or for this end goal um it's for the the band that i'm working with or the album that i'm working on or you know just know that those are going to be kind of two different things that are going on but be honest with yourself as you do it okay now with all that in mind uh the question happens, the question I think that comes out of this is where does a song begin? Where does it, where does it start? And this is where, Nick, what you're saying is so essential because a song can start from a lyric or can start from music. So I could sit down one day and just be playing around. I'm just playing and something comes to mind. You know, I can just start singing a melody to myself or whatever, or maybe a phrase comes to mind as I'm, as I'm praying, you know, I, uh, 
Yeah, something like, uh, Lord, heal our land. You know, I could just come up with an idea, and it starts to f it starts to ferment and 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 to grow, and and ideas come to mind, and and that that can be a way to write, to just sit down and just improvise, just play. I mean, it's literally play, and yeah. uh, and so songs can come from just that sort of inspirational place. And, and, and those are the two words that come to mind for me when I think about that kind of writing. It's inspiration, it's play. Um, another way to write is to journal. So if you come from a lyrical perspective, that if I sit down and I just start to journal, just write, um, and often, oftentimes what comes out of, if, if you're writing for the purpose of lyric, Rather than just writing the lyric, what is a good way to do it is to just write. Write some ideas down. Uh, because our train of thought and the way we, we logically sort of lay things out in a journal um, can, can also become a, a way of logically laying out verse to chorus to verse to chorus kind of idea. Um, so, so as you write, you're writing just for the, the sake of putting words on paper. Uh, and then you have the opportunity to maybe go back to that and sing portions of what you've written. Not because they're lyrics, but just because they're thoughts and feelings and ideas that you've laid out for yourself. Some people like to journal, they like to carry, um, I don't have one here with me, but uh, a small, uh, whether it's a, a moleskin or a, um, a little pad of paper, and when they see something, they just write down a phrase because it, it, you know, all of a sudden they saw something in, in, that happened in the world and, and it just made them think of a specific phrase. And so they write it down uh, and they co collect all those phrases and ideas in a small book that they can then go back to and write lyrics from. So, so I always think about how am I capturing my ideas? And then the, the, uh, you know, one of the one of the the uh, ideas that I've I've heard of people doing is what they call free writing, which is you just sit down and you write for the purpose of trying to capture some thoughts for lyrics. And it's free writing. There's it's like brainstorming. Um, you're you're just brainstorming, 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 and you're not editing at that point. You're just free writing. And so that's a way to begin to collect ideas and to put them somewhere to collect them. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. But the main thing that I want to stress is for you to be a songwriter, I believe, and I'm not going to you know, plant my flag in the ground and say this is a have to, but I believe it requires margin. There's no, there's no other way about it. For you to be able to process and, uh, and to artistically invest yourself into some type of work, it uh, that comes out with a song, you have to have margin for it. Now that doesn't mean you're not going to write a song in ten minutes because sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just happens that you you know I wrote "Fan the Flame" in about a half an hour, and it was mostly because it's it's a very simple song a, but b um, because I was going from a text. I was at a territorial men's retreat in the Eastern Territory in 99 some of you may not have even been born then uh <laughs> but uh but i was at a territorial retreat and they had two scripture verses that they were using as sort of the the theme verses and i opened them up because i was like i want to do something special for this retreat so i went and sat down at the piano uh the night before the retreat started and I just sat with these two verses and as I played around with it, uh, the, the one line that came out was, Father, fan the flame in me. Um, and then as, as, as the, the you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes go on, all of a sudden I realize I've got something here. I'm going to finish this. And so I forced myself to finish it within that time frame so I could, I could teach it uh, the next day. Um, but that's not always true. I've got songs that I've been working on for 30 years that I still love, but I can't, I just can't finish it. There's something missing about the song. I'm not ready to present it to people. It's just, it's, it, but it's still there, 
you know, and, and that happens. That's yeah. a really good point, Randy. I, I've just heard stories of that. Um, I, I listened to a podcast. I can't remember what it was now. Andy and I may have been listening to it together, but about um, different people and their, and their processes where some, sometimes it happens instantly. And then you have like um, uh, Hallelujah, uh, this song that everybody in the world has recorded that um, uh, uh, he never stopped writing. Uh, it, yeah. it was a process that, that went on for years. Um, and I think um, for, for some of us, that can almost be discouraging uh, where we have moments of inspiration and then we wonder why that never happens again as we're slaving away, working really hard at these other songs that we just feel like we can't quite get there. Um, uh, but, but you're saying that's a part of the process too, or these, these songs that, that you work out over time. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And, and, and it's, it's okay. You know, it, it, it may be that that song just isn't meant to be heard yet. <laughs> um, or it may not be ever be meant to be heard. I, I remember meeting with a, a producer in Nashville at one point, and he told me that there are several kinds of songs, but he said there are songs that are meant for you, that you've written, that is really just meant for you to hear it. You mm -hmm. wrote it for you. Nobody else needs to hear it or probably should hear it um, <laughs> because it, it's, it may not be good enough. You know, He said there's also the kind of song that's meant for a small group of people. Um, and, and that's okay too, you know, that there, that just because of the, an event that occurred or whatever, everyone's really connected and can relate to that song. Then there are songs that are meant for a wider audience. And then there are hit songs, you know, he, he, he delineated between, you know, songs that are meant for a mass audience that are just really good songs. And then there are hit songs. Hit songs are very different. They have a distinct sort of nature to them. And sometimes they're very formulaic. And uh, and we you know we could get into you know deep into that about why it is that Nashville and L.A. and New York produce so similar music and Nashville is actually actually really uh, guilty of that. There you you when you listen to the radio you can tell if something's been recorded in Nashville. It's just mm. it's got that nature to it. But that doesn't mean it's not a good song. It just you know it's got that certain feel and sound and and that's why it works. You know. Um, so what I want to invite you to do as you begin to write is to open up your ears and your eyes to the world. So the world around you, what's going, listen, journal, capture ideas, inspirations, phrases, uh, pay attention to the prayers that you pray. Uh, prayers that you pray can be wonderful, wonderful songs, uh, as well. Uh, listen to the, the prayers of others and hear what their hearts are, are praying when you're together. Uh, and, and try to capture what people are praying in songs. Because uh, there are, you know, there, in the world of Christian music, there are many different kinds of songs. If we think about worship music primarily, uh, Constance Cherry wrote a book called Selecting Songs for Worship. And she nails worship songs down to like five, let's see, what are the five different kinds. She says there's songs of proclamation, of petition, which is, if you think about it, that's, those are our prayers, of praise, which also can be a prayer, of course, of exhortation, which is to encourage or to edify one another. And then the last one is a call to action. So those five sort of ideas capture um, the, uh, what, is, what it is in a, in a Christian worship song. So if you think about hearing the prayers of others and trying to capture it in a song, essentially what you're doing is writing a song of worship um, that might be used in a small group, might be used in a, at your church, might be meant for the masses. You, ne you never know. Um, but I would tell you that in our case as Christian writers, the, the main thing that we want to do is be able to uh, know God's story so that when we write songs, we are... Uh, we are finding a way to capture parts, parts of God's story or the entirety of God's story uh, in, in a song. You mentioned uh, Come Behold the Wondrous Mystery. What I love about that song or In Christ Alone is their biblical overview songs. They, they capture a, a large uh, swath of the gospel. And, um, and so if you think about, um, yeah, a song that, that is, is, uh, is the whole gospel, 
um, that tells God's story, those are, those are the kinds of songs that I think of. But also if you're capturing a piece of God's story, um, and, and if, you, if you can understand that, even a lament or our sense of pain or loss, those are parts of, of the story that God is telling in us. Um, and, and we want to be, be capturing those, but always, as, as Christian writers, we want to be always capturing those ideas in a sense of God's faithfulness, because as we read Scripture and we understand it from start to finish, there is a faithfulness written into that story that no other, no, no other religion, no other worldview has. And so we've, we're always founded in that, in that faithfulness. Um, and I would encourage you, so a good place to start with Scripture um, is the Psalms. The Psalms capture, uh, number one, they were songs, um, <laughs> but, uh, but they also capture sort of, it's a much more image-driven uh, uh, language, um, which we tend to, to like as artists, uh, but it's also, it's also very prayer-oriented, very much communication between God and man. And so uh, the Psalms would be a great place. Just to, just to kind of add to this is I would just remind you to be careful as you write, not to, to use meaningless phrases or kind of cliche phrases. Um, stay away from things that are unattainable, like I will worship you all of my days. I've written a song like that, um, by the way, so I'm guilty. Uh, I, but those, those, are, those are unattainable. If you think about what you're saying is you're putting words in the mouths of a person and you're saying that I'm going to worship you always. And that's, that's not always true. And people struggle to sing songs that have unattainable attributes. Um, so, uh, and so go ahead. Uh, sorry, Randy, I was just going to say that um, we, at our core through our, our band program recently, have had some people come in who have limited church experience maybe in their life, but they've come uh, uh, through the fellowship of other people in the band. Uh, many of them, you know, some of them have gone on to become soldiers in the core and things, but that's something that I've thought about uh, more and more as we have people who come in who maybe haven't heard some of this uh, Christianese is kind of my, the phrase yeah. that I like about it all the time is how, how does this sound to someone in that situation? Like a phrase like that, I will worship you all of my days. I can imagine someone coming in and going, and wait, wait a minute. Like, what are you, what are you really saying here? And I think that's a very valid viewpoint that if we really stop and think about some of the phrases that, that get slipped into songs, we realize that uh, they, they just, don't, they don't sound realistic sometimes, no matter how, uh, holy you might be. Um, so that, that's definitely something to, that we need to think about. Because it's so easy because we hear these phrases all the time for them to, uh, you know, they roll right off the pen really easily right. when we're writing. Yeah. They just yeah, naturally would, sort of pour out. Yeah, it, it happens. Yeah. They're, they're untrue. That, uh, I don't want to call it a lie, but they're creating a, 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 an untruth in, in, the, in the song. Because, like you said, it's unattainable. So yeah. there's no way. I mean, it might be the desire of our heart, but that doesn't mean that that's what's actually going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to go back to Fan the Flame, not because I love this song, but just because it makes, it makes sense. I could, say, I could have sung, um, I will be holy, um, or I can sing, to be holy for your honor, um, so that Christ be seen in me. I, I'm, it's, an, it's an aspiration, but it's mm. not a statement of fact. Um, That's so, great. yeah, there, there's something different about the, you know, phrasing, the way in which you phrase um, aspirations and, and desires, I think that's all, all really good, but to, to, to create a statement, especially one that is, uh, you know, for all time is, uh, is, a, is, yeah, it, just be careful with that. And then I would, I would just say, sing truth, um, you know, know your scripture and sing truth. Um, all right, so let me let me move to the songwriting part now. The, oh, oh uh, just one other thing. So when I talk about all that stuff, tools for capturing if you if you have a journal um if you you all we all have phones with uh, voice recorders um there are you know other ways of capturing i've got let me show you 
let me show you this. I, my daughter got this for me for Christmas. I, I've never seen one of these before, but this is a this is a journal. Here, let me sort of show you. Where on one side you can write, uh, 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 you can write like um, freehand, like uh, words, <laughs> and on the other side is is sheet music. So I can actually manuscript paper. Cool. So I uh, so when I want to collect an idea like musically really quickly, uh, sometimes I'll just write out the the. And, they, and so these exist. I, I had no idea that this existed, and she got it for me for Christmas. Um, so uh, so if any way that you capture ideas and you can go back to them, uh, do it. Find a way to capture those ideas. Uh, it's important because otherwise I think I have too many ideas that I had, and then I went back the next day, and I was like, where did it go? And there, there are people who say, well, if that happens, that song was never meant to be, but... I don't want to go that that far. All right, so so uh, so let's say you want to start by writing music first. Actually, no. Let's let's say you want to start with a lyric first. Um, and we've talked about journaling. We've talked about free writing, phrase or idea building, um, writing from a text. Um, I wrote a mu a musical for Christmas not too long ago. Well, yeah, it's been about ten years now, where my wife actually sat down and wrote out the story. She didn't write any lyrics. She just wrote the story we wanted to capture. And, uh, and I took that and wrote the musical portion of it all from what she had written. It was a really great way for me to write because I didn't have to really come up with lyric ideas. Uh, she's a, a th more of a theatrical writer. And so she was writing monologues was basically what she was doing. And I was just taking that and putting it in, into music. And, and we wrote... Basically, it was, it, it was a thing around Christmas where we were writing from the perspective of the characters. Uh, so it was Joseph singing about finding out his wife is pregnant uh, or his betrothed is pregnant. Uh, Mary finding out that she, you know, the Holy Spirit comes upon her and, you know, her response, you know. And so you just turn to the Magnificat in Scripture and you, you've got a song right there, number one, because it is a song. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so writing from a lyric or from story ideas or whatever, that's a great way to begin. Um, and so I, I, for the sake of today, I used an example of Amazing Grace. I took Amazing Grace and the chorus of And Can It Be just to sort of, you know, give us a text. And so we all know Amazing Grace. Uh, so I, um, I wrote this little thing. This is in 6-8. It goes, Amazing Grace. Uh, see, and this is why I wrote it down. All right, now I got it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound That saved a wretch like me I once was lost, but now I'm found Was blind, but now I see Amazing love, how can So some, something real simple like that. Yeah. Now, I wrote that in six. Um, and uh, a, couple ex a couple of things I wanted to, to, to do with that. So this is really academic writing. I'm not sure I really like this song uh, as what I've written, but I, I'm doing it as an academic sort of exercise. Um, I put it in 6-8, which is uh, the most heavenly of time signatures, I think. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of stuff will be in 6-8 in heaven. Um, but the other thing uh, I did was, so one of the things that happens in writing from a lyric is you have to be faithful to the, the rhythmic nature of the lyric. So amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. So if, if I put the, if I, as, in, as I write music, if I put, the wrong emphasis in the wrong or put the emphasis in the wrong place I can really screw up the lyric um, and so it's it's really being faithful to your text so it's sticking to your text and being faithful to your text and not trying to make your text jam into your musical idea so really thinking about now 
um, one of the one of the things that that you'll find. So with these with this particular uh, melody, uh, what I've written is something that has a uh, motif in it. So if you think about it, it goes like this. Uh, sorry. So that's the first melodic idea. And then it gets repeated. Uh, well, I'm sorry. No, that's not the complete idea. That's the full idea. So da 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 That's the idea. It gets repeated. Da 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 Then there's just a little bit of a shift to it. Da 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 Right? So one of the one of the important parts about writing songs is developing a melodic and rhythmic motif to your writing so that there's some some repetition to it that is memorable it makes it memorable and when I talk about repetition I'm not talking about mindless repetition I'm talking about my repetition for the purpose of uh, of recall um, you want your song to be memorable and uh, so then the other thing that happens here in the second part of the song, so I move to a chorus. Da, 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 da. This is very similar to the actual <laughs> melody yeah. of, of <laughs> Amazing Love. Da, 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 da. So one of the things that changes there, it, there's a contrast that happens between section A and section B. Now we've gone on to a new section but it has a contrast to it. So where there was lots of movement, da 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 in the first section, the second section has much longer notes. Da 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 The other thing that happens is there is chordal change that is different. So in the first section, um, you'll hear the, the, the chords change faster. Right? The second section. Da, 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 da. Now, I, not, not that this is a perfect song by any means, but what it academic sort of, again, this is just an academic exercise. What it's doing is it's showing you the use of contrast. So contrast be between the first section and the second section. You could, you could switch that. The first section could have, um, okay, so I'll take one of my songs, uh, uh, Come Sing for Joy, which is, has a very simple, uh, da, 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 right, very simple. But when it gets to the, the chorus, it's now the contrast is that it's much it has much more movement to it. Not that it's the perfect song by any means, but it 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 just showing you how songs have contrast built into them. Um, now, one of the, th the other things that I could do with this Amazing Grace song is I could do the same melody in a different time signature. Um, uh, let's see. Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. So it, it changes the feel of the song, right? Uh, so, uh, uh, amazing grace. was the first idea. This one is amazing grace, the sweet the sound. So playing with, tem uh, with tempo and time signature, um, the melody didn't change much. I still had this idea of a, of, a, of a melody in my brain, but I was able to shift it and go, oh, you know, I'm not sure which I like better. This one has this kind of feel. Now I could also uh, shift it just to, um, uh, so I was playing with this idea earlier today. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. You know, right? 
yeah. So you, you're getting a lot of mileage out of one melodic idea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have, there's lots of room uh, to play and to try and figure out where does this song fit best? Well, how, and the melody hasn't really changed. I'm just mm. changing how, how it feels, how I want to express it. And so w those are the decisions you're making as a songwriter. You might have a melodic idea in your brain, but, but you know, it, it might shift and change over time because you're working with a lyric and that lyric can have multiple ways of expressing itself. Nick could probably tell you as well as Andy about the metrical index in the songbook and how, how the beauty of, so I'm gonna tell you the beauty of the way the Salvation Army set up their songbook is that it gives you the opportunity to sing a song in, with several different melodies because there is a, a, this metrical index which, which allows you to choose a different melody that works with the same song, and it's amazing how that works. And so the deeper you get into this, the deeper you'll realize, oh, uh, this is the metrical index of my song. What else, what other kinds of melodies could I use with this? Or uh, what other, other words might work with this, uh, this melody that I just wrote? Um, I mean, I, I think that's one of the, the beauties, again, of the songbook is that we have writers around the world who are still playing with those the the words to create new melodies and uh and that's just that's a, a really unique aspect of the salvation army and one i think that uh we should all be very proud of just the the way that that there there's new life built into the songs that we already sing because people are continuing to be creative with um the music um, yeah. So that's beginning with uh, so that's beginning with a lyric. Beginning with music, I would tell you that that uh, the the thing that differs with that is that you're usually creating a melodic idea that um, uh, that you're you're then playing with a lyric with. So you're creating your own lyric as you go along, and that's a lot of the writing that I do when I'm writing music. I I, I try and sit down and just pour out my heart as I'm uh, come sing for joy was one of those songs that kind of came from a place where I had just I was in my master's program and I just had done a course in in biblical overview which um, I have a there's a great book called the drama of scripture uh, which is a wonderful book that captures the the overview of scripture and would be a great place for you to go read um, it's to understand more fully how the Bible fits together. And, uh, and so this course, uh, I, I took at the end of the course, I was like, I want to write something that, you know, captures this, you know, th this sense. I, I just had a renewed, you know, just zeal for, for how the Bible all fits together and, and to celebrate it. And so come sing for joy really kind of came from that. Um, the idea of, it was both a biblical overview and then also uh, it was kind of found in, in Psalm 98 as I was reading through Psalm 98. So a combination of those things. Um, yeah. And so, the, but when I wrote it, I had certain ideas of it. I had a verse, a verse and a chorus and I took it to a worship band rehearsal and I said, Hey guys, will you play this through with me? And, and I, we played through the first part and, and I said, and then there, there's a bridge, you know, uh, we wait for you, we wait for you, and I'm, I'm not sure where it's going to go from there. And I finished, we finished kind of just playing it. And uh, one of my, my team members turned to me and she said, you need to finish this for Sunday. Uh, <laughs> I said, Re oh, really? You, you think I should do that? Yeah, you need to finish this for Sunday. This, this is a really good song. And she's a songwriter. And, and, and she said, this is a really good song, and I want to sing it with you on Sunday. So I... I just knuckled down and, and finished it. Um, but that would be another part of writing that I think is essential um, f for you is, is how am I sharing my ideas with other people? And where am I getting feedback? Not just from mom, but where am I getting feedback from others that is encouraging me or actually discouraging me? Um, because I think discouragement is not, and I don't mean it like <laughs> you feel bad about yourself. I mean that not everything you create is great because <laughs> there's something good about 
presenting something to somebody and having them say, you know, that lyric or that melody. I remember I, uh, I w was collaborating with Phil Lager uh, at one point, um, and we, don't, we didn't do a lot of this. I'm not a great collaborator. I'm just not. Uh, but I presented him a song that I'd written, and he said, you know, Randy, this is, this is really good. But the reason it's really good is because it's this song. <laughs> and he played me another song that was the exact same <laughs> melody. Know. And I went, oh, crud. You know, uh, <laughs> but it was really good to have that voice in the room with me yeah. so that I didn't present a song to people and say, listen to this song I wrote and not have another person, you know, ever say to me, hey, um, that sounds a lot like such and such. So, um, so having some constructive feedback, uh, some places where you can go, where somebody can say, you, you, this is good, you can do better. That's not yeah. always a bad thing to hear. Oftentimes, I think it, you know, it kind of comes from the world of, of performance review. When, we, when we're, we have a job and we're getting a performance review, when you hear this is something you need to work on, oftentimes we take that as, oh, I'm, I'm a bad employee or I'm, I'm not very good at what I do. But no, that's not what people are saying to you. They're saying, you can get better. I believe you're, you can be better, and here's how you can get better. And so I think that's important for us as songwriters to have places where people say to us, you know, that's good, but have you thought about this? Have you thought about, if you've ever watched, what was the show, uh, Songland? Has anybody ever seen that show? Um, it's, uh, yeah, they've got four, four. Yeah, it was a great one. Great, yeah. great show. Great show. They've got four songwriters and uh, they pick, uh, uh, you know, emerging songwriters to come on and pitch a song to an artist. So the one I, I remember seeing was with, uh, uh, now I'm forgetting who it was. Anyway, uh, but the, you, they walked in and they, and, and they presented their songs and these four songers, songwriters would help to sort of codify where that song should go. Here, have you thought about taking it in this direction? Have you thought about this? Oh, those lyrics are really good. Have you thought about maybe uh, how, how this imagery could affect the song? And most of the time, a better song comes out of it. I mean, it's yeah. amazing how, yeah. how just uh, the word of, it, uh, of someone who knows the craft um, and can give you a, a few suggestions makes you better. But if those people had taken those words that other people had told them, and and said they don't know what they're talking about this is my song it's perfect i it, it's saying what i want it to say um then they would have never ended up with the song that ended up you know getting sung by you know some uh you know famous artist who who's yeah. gonna make them money yeah randy i know um that 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 hits home for me this is something i i've struggled with in my own writing and then tried to help other people through as well as you can when you're writing something, you can get so tied to it because you feel like you poured your heart out into the, into the paper. And then whenever you, you bring it to somebody, you know, Andy and I have a great relationship, so I'll bring it to him and then we'll work, we'll work through it. And uh, it, it took me a little bit to realize that that's what we were doing. It was not tearing down something because you did a bad job of it, but you're, you're, there's, there's something really to be said for having someone that you trust that you can bring something to and then work through it. And then sometimes you still don't want to do it, but uh, it's, it's a process that, that, that you work through. And I, I think that's, you're right. That's good for us all to know that um, you're, you're not being told that what you're doing is necessarily, you're not being told that it's bad or that uh, you're not good at this. You're, you're going through the working out process of, of turning it into what it could really be. Um, to realize its full potential. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I think we all want to be better. We, we just, I think sometimes we just wish we were great to begin with. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's just, it's, that's not always the case. Um, it's, it, you know, I've heard it said that, that you really don't know your writing until you've written about a thousand songs. Uh, you really haven't found your voice until you've gotten there. And that's, that's a lot of songs. You know, it's, it's, but the, the, I think the equivalent is when people say you, you become really good at something when you've spent 10,000 hours doing it. Um, so, you know, most great musicians 
you know, there's that 10,000 hour mark, for instance, you know, that they've become great musicians typically after they've spent that amount of time learning or whether it's, uh, at, you know, a, a, some other kind of craft or art, or artisan, you know, ability. There's, there's time that has to, to, to be part of the process of becoming good at it. And that's why I go back to the margin piece, which is you need margin. You need margin to make mistakes and to uh, margin to, you know, to, to find the right word when, you, when you're really searching for that word. If you don't have that margin, the, the word that, that's there might continue to just not be the right word because you just didn't find the time to really sit and invest and, and allow yourself to, to spend time yeah. with it. Yeah, I uh, I know that we're we're coming up on about oh yeah it's about eight twenty four, um, so um, I would love for I've got a few other things that I could end with, but I I want to know if there are some thoughts or questions or things that I could address for you, that would help you specifically, uh, as you think about songwriting. Okay, I a, I'm going to jump. Oh, someone else went. I, I defer to someone else. I think it's Josh. I just have a, I have, I have a question, Randy. I, um, I appreciate uh, uh, everything that I know that, that you've written has been, uh, has been incredible. And I appreciate your heart for this. Um, you, you said a second ago that um, you, know, you may not actually know your voice, your, your voice in songwriting until you've written a thousand songs. You know, that's, that's probably, that's an indefinite number, but you know, a, a, you could probably extrapolate that the vast majority of the songs that you write never actually get presented to people. Uh, would, is, is that fair to say that most, most of the songs that you write are really just um, in that moment, th these are the words that have, that have come out. And if that's the case, do you, do you record each of them in some fashion or document them in some fashion? And how, how do you handle that? Yeah, um, I mean, the answer to that would be n no, I don't. Uh, because I think that I have an ear for when I'm, if, when I'm hitting it and I have an ear for when I don't think I am. Um, hmm. and, and so oftentimes I, I might have an idea, but whether, it, whether it's just that there's a, a barrier or a block, um, I'm, I, so when I say no, what I mean by that is I might record it here um, and go back to it and go, is that a good song? So that I, yeah. you know, you know, 30 days later, I'm going back to that song going, eh, no, it still doesn't, it still doesn't really take me anywhere. Um, so, so the answer to that for me is no. Now I have, I have a friend who's one of the most prolific writers I've, I've ever known. He's a old school, uh, you know, <laughs> 70s sort of Christian music rocker. Um, it was part of the whole beginning of the movement. His name is Paul Clark. And Paul is one of the more, most prolific writers I've ever met in my whole life. And his, his concept is, I write a bunch of songs, I put them on a record, I release the record, and I move on. And I've never been able to do that because I'm afraid that that time stamp might not, um, it might not have legs. It might not age well. And, and that's the difference between somebody who has really thick skin and somebody like me who maybe doesn't have as thick a skin and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm really afraid of failure. I'm just going to say yeah. that out loud. So yeah. I don't always put things out that I, I, I have a whole blues recording that, that uh, I've worked on a, a whole sort of cycle of songs. And my reason that I've never released it is because I'm a, I haven't found the right band to execute it. And I don't want to put this stuff out if it's just kind of okay, you know, because I right. love this material. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, if that makes sense. And I and I don't have the I don't have the 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 money to invest in it, you know. <laughs> so just somewhere I've got a bank account that's ready to invest into a into an album of blues music that maybe somebody somebody might buy. I yeah. Mean, do people buy music anymore? I mean, it's it's part of it. it yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if that answered your question totally, Josh. No, it, it does. It does. All right. Good. Definitely. 
Brandy, what would you say to somebody who, who maybe they feel like they're, they're good at writing words, um, but maybe they struggle with music or melody um, or vice versa, but they still kind of feel that urge to write? Uh, do you have any advice for them? Yeah, that's where I would say collaborate. Find, find someone. Find someone who, who you know who might be. I, what I would tell you is if you're a lyric writer and you're like, I like it, love to write lyrics, I want to find a collaborator, you have to be willing to give that up and release it in a way so that when the music writer comes back to you and says, I've changed a few of the words or some of the, the rhythms of this, you don't go, you've changed my work. You know, you, you have to be willing to give a little bit there for the sake of the song itself. I mean, yeah. if they've written a really good melody, um, but they've had to change a few of the words to kind of fit the words properly, um, you have to be okay with that. And I would say that the same is true for a music writer. Um, if, if, you write a, if you write a melody that doesn't fit that lyric and the lyricist says, that, that just doesn't feel right, you have to hear it. Uh, so it's a true collaboration. It requires both parties to, to be invested in such a way as they want to end up with a really good song. Yeah. I, I think the, uh, something you touched on earlier, just for us in the Salvation Army, if if you don't feel like you're a good lyric writer, we have a book full of almost a thousand sets of lyrics that uh, yeah. may be waiting for the next update to freshen them up. So, so there's, there's, there are ready-made lyrics out there um, that, uh, that you can take a stab at if you're, if you're willing. Yep. So one thing I would like to actually ask of this um, is, I know normally I songs like whenever they come um, I know normally whenever songs come through, they uh, I normally have a message to go along with them. Um, is it normally to focus on like one message or kind of like leave that kind of opening? Because like I'll I'll even admit like your song comes sing for joy. I actually get a different message than probably what anyone else in this chat even would probably even get. Um, so I didn't know if that was well, a thing to try. You know, and... that's actually, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but that's actually a good. Uh, it's 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 a uh, it's a, a good value for a good song is if someone else can listen to it and hear themselves in it in a way that maybe I wouldn't have um, that well there are two things there number one I kind of I would say well that's isn't that the amazing work of the Holy Spirit how that can happen how you can hear a song and I can hear something totally different or it speaks to me a different way than it speaks to you uh, it might it might have something to do with time and place. I think I think songs have a time and a place that when it, where you heard it, has it there's an indelible mark made on it. So uh, oftentimes we can. I wrote a song a long time ago called Passion, that for me takes me back to uh, the Central Central Bible and Leadership Institute in the 90s. And there's a, a specific building that I can remember that being sung in, in a way that has just never been sung in before or, or since. And oh, wow. so for me, that song always marks that place and that time. And, and so I think that that can be true for a song. So it, it's, it's a time and a place, but it also can be an emotion that you felt the first time you heard it. Um, or there was a circumstance in your life that you were going through that it spoke to directly, and so that it that stays with you. Um, yeah, songs are there's just a really uh, and I use this word in a really good way. There's a mystical nature to songs, um, almost a, a, a another realm, a, a divine realm to them that uh, we can't explain. There was someone, I thought I heard someone chime in a minute ago saying they had a question, when that, uh, but I didn't catch Shelby? who it was on my screen. Was it Shelby? Shelby, what you got? Or are you frozen? Shelby, I just wanted to ask, oh, am I frozen? Can you guys hear me? Can we can, hear, we can me? hear you, but your video um, is frozen, but we can hear you. Maybe not. And I think we've lost you a little bit, Shelby. Try again. I hope Yeah, hey, Shelby, type it in. But anyway. Hey, Shelby, I think I type um, it into the chat. We're losing it a little bit. How 
Perfect. Can you hear me now? There we go. Try that. Okay. That's good. Go for it, Shelby. You're muted. Yeah, oh, Shelby. She wrote it. How would you discern which song to publicize? Oh, okay. Make fun of my grammar. <laughs> um, so, uh, do you mean how how would I discern which song to publish? Is that kind of where you're going there? Uh, like, which audience is appropriate for the song that you wrote? Okay. Uh, you know, that's a that's a good question. I think it has to do with you. Um, it, but that's where you get into, so one of the things that I would tell you, I'm going to step back just a second. When you're writing a song, don't produce it while you write it. Um, so what I mean by that is don't think about what the recording is going to be or what the groove might be or what the feel might be. Just write your song. And the reason I say that in answer to your question is because I think the way a song is delivered often determines its audience. And so if you're thinking about how you know who oftentimes when we are writing a song we have we have a, a picture or an idea of the of the people who we want to hear it and when you're so then when you're 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 kind of putting together that 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 place or that time or that recording that you're getting it ready for i think that's you're thinking about those people and so um I, and so it, with that in mind, you're thinking about, uh, I'm going to sing this for my church, or I'm going to sing this for my youth, at a youth councils, or I'm going to, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and, uh, and so oftentimes that's when I'm thinking about writing like a worship song, I'm thinking, will my congregation engage in this? Um, and then there are other times I'm thinking about, will, uh, other congregations engage in this? So not just mine, but others, would others get this or would it be something that would work for them so I, I think i'm writing in in that sense i'm writing for my song to be a congregational uh, expression now if i'm writing a song that i want to be sort of a solo piece um that that's just kind of coming from my voice it, it, i'm asking myself am i going to am i going to take this to a coffee shop am i going to take this to a you know some other venue and and i'm i'm you know i'm i'm thinking about where where is it going and that's that's the idea of thinking about product versus process you're when you're thinking about the product you're thinking about who's going to hear this and how am i going to express it when i play it i'm not sure if that totally answered your question shelby but a little bit okay Nick, did you have some, uh, Nick Simmons Smith, did you have something you were going to say early on and we kind of... I was saving the silence is what I was doing, Jimmy, okay. but I, I did. <laughs> Firstly, I want the first and the third version of Amazing Grace, and I'm going to publish that under my name. Uh, the second one was fine, but I really like the first and the third one. Okay. Beautiful, Randy. Beautiful. Um, my question is about melody, Randy. You touched on this, and... It, you know, we have to be very careful. We're not overly critical when we're worshiping together, but sometimes uh, there is a trend for a lack of discernible, enjoyable melody mm -hmm. in some praise and worship songs. And, and, and I, I noticed this particularly when I'm transcribing them for a brass band to play and suddenly the cornets go, but da 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 you know, uh, what can we do to make melody more uh, melodic and less rhythmic? Um, so, so one of the things that I would say in general, uh, and I didn't, I didn't get to this, but I, there is a, there's a part of what we do that requires study. And, uh, so like when you study forms, you have to, you have to, um, you have to study all the different forms. Like what, what's a hymn form? What's, what's a, a typical song form, a chorus form, a, a one that has a bridge or one that is more free flowing or long form? Um, and when you think of, think about the, the type of writing you're doing, um, that is going to, it's going to help you to understand how to put a song together in total. And the same is true when it comes to writing melody. The more you study melodic writers, 
the more you're going to uh, understand really good songs. Okay, so if I were to give you one thing that you could do that would uh, help you to understand melody well and how powerful it can be and how popular it can be is go listen to Disney music. So <laughs> go listen to Frozen or um, any, any of the princess movies or any, the melodies in those, those films are unbelievable. Alan Menken is, is one of the finest melody writers of our time. Uh, there's a new set of writers that they've, they've now brought into, um, into, uh, you know, they did frozen. Um, and I don't remember their names, but the, they're from the same school. They're writing great melodies. And, and when we talk about that, um, so there's good repetition and bad repetition. And sometimes in melody, there, there's just a lot of bad repetition. Um, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, I was listening to a song earlier today and, and the, the verse of it, I was really surprised at how much it stayed on one note and then kind of did a little thing here and then did it. Now, when it got to the chorus, the chorus was great, but it was a song that I was like, wow, I expected more from this because it was kind of a popular thing. And so, so I think being careful not to sit in one area, I have to say the one bad thing about... Uh, <laughs> Is there that it just repeats those three notes um, and it does it again. So there it changes. But it's the one thing if I if I went back, I'm, you know, I wonder would I change that? I'm not sure, uh, you know, but I guess that's good repetition. Yeah. But there's there's a difference between that and and somebody writing a song that's got a really good. And so they've written from a groove, right? And so they they love the riff that you know I, uh, like this. You know they've got this really cool groove, but then they end up writing a really boring melody over it. That yeah. really what they've done is they've is they've written over their groove. You can you know what what happened there is that the, the melody and the lyric came later. They, they just found a really cool groove they liked. That's, you know? I, I know for me, that, that's a trap I fall into all the time. Because I'm a guitar player. I, I, I don't sing because I want people to like me. So I, 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 pl I, I, I play and a lot of like, I, I play and I can write lyrics, but I, I'm not great at melody. So like whenever I bring something and Anthony has to sing it or something, then I really have to have him help me kind of work through and or bring it to Andy um, to make sure it's going to feel natural to sing. But yeah, that that's a big time danger if you're writing from your instrument. Uh, so to let me let me share a funny thing. My now I I became a worship pastor at the church I'm at 17 years ago, and I came from the Salvation Army. My daughter, my oldest daughter, is 25, so that means she was eight when when we came to where I am now. Um, but I remember playing a song and, uh, gosh, what was it? Uh, I, I think it was I Surrender. That one, you know, I Surrender. Uh, you guys all probably know that. I Surrender My Name for Your Glory. Played that song and immediately my daughter Erin said, is that a Salvation Army song? And I said, yeah. She goes, I could tell. I said, really? Why? She said, because of the melody. Wow. There's something about the melodic writing of Salvation Army writers. There's, it's, it's interesting, you know. You know, that's uh, All That I Am by Bill Himes. There's uh, there's something about the the melodic writing of Salvation Army writers, and I I think don't be afraid to to listen to them as well. They there are some wonderful melodic writers in the Salvation Army, so I would tell you spend some time with Disney music and spend some time with you know good Salvation Army melody writers. Yeah, um, some things I noticed earlier, Randy, when you were going through Amazing Grace. Um, uh, some kind of concepts that, that you talked about get 
talked about in if you're going to school for music and you're learning about melodies about you know sequences of of, of notes here and then you play the same kind of shape but using uh, using different notes to do it or, or augmenting the melody these kinds of things there are um, we can look to to other melodies melodies and hymnody even if we're doing more syncopated things nowadays but there are uh, tried and true um, methods that make great melodies um, mm -hmm. that, that have existed for a long time um, that yeah I think we got to be mindful of it Nick I'm glad you brought that up because it Sometimes you don't realize how droney a melody can be uh, these days. It can be mind-numbing once you start picking up on it. Well, I would say, like, for instance, one of my favorite things, one of my favorite moves, just intervals, is a sixth. Mm -hmm. You know, you could just... And I just made that up. But uh, <laughs> because it's start, that sixth... You know, make it just that it's such a sweet interval that it can feed a lot of different places, and and that's a lot of times what writers aren't thinking of first is that melody. Uh, they're thinking about you know how they might be able to groove a song or or their their really cool chord changes or whatever. And yep. and uh, yeah, I think melody is a it, typically in in my brain we think more about melody when we're writing a slower song than we do one when we're writing a faster song. But that's a, that's a generalization that, you know, probably doesn't stand a test. Oh, I think it probably does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, if I were to reiterate, I would say get feedback and study to be stronger at your craft. You know, whether it's, you know, if you're good at music, really study lyrics. If you're, Good at lyrics, study music more. Find out where you're weak and get better at that. Um, and oftentimes people will tell you. They'll, they're, they're willing to tell you where your weakness is, but, all, but it's good to know your weakness. And not for the sake of so you can feel bad about yourself, but so you can get better in that area. Remember yeah. to, you know, to uh, be really thinking over and, and pouring over scripture as you write. Uh, and then change things up. If you write lyrics first, write music first. You know, uh, can, if you write from piano, write from another instrument. Try writing, uh, just write the melody without playing. Um, you know, write from a prompt. One of my favorite songs that I've ever written was from a prompt somebody gave me because I just threw it out there. I said, somebody give me a prompt. I want to write a song. And the, and the prompt was, uh, I believe you have me confused with someone else. <laughs> and so I wrote this really great country song that I just can't find anybody to sing. Uh, but, you know, it, and, and uh, I love the song, uh, but it came from a prompt because someone gave me an idea and I just made up a story and I wrote this song. Uh, or write with a collaborator. If you, if you don't know or normally write with collaborator, collaborators, do that. Remember this, that great songs, especially great worship songs, are filled with authenticity. So as you write, make sure it's, it's something that you know, you feel, and, and you, can, you can give to somebody else because it's authentic to you. So those would be the yeah. things I would leave you with. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Randy, th listen, thank you so much. Um, I mean, f listen, for those of you, I, I, I feel inspired to write. Um, I, sometimes I, I go through, through, through periods where I do and where I don't, but I mean, it's so good to get together in these things and hear, hear the things that you have to say. Um, so. Um, thank you for that. Um, for all of you here in AOK, I would say um, you have at your disposal here, 20 feet away from me, a recording studio where if you wrote music and you want to come and record it or get some feedback or just uh, lay it down and see what happens, uh, come up here and do it. We, we, we would love to, to have you here and be able to, be able to do that. Um, uh, and take these things that Randy has said to heart and uh, uh, be willing to do it. Go start. Start writing. If you yeah. haven't, you know, put pen to paper and, and start making it happen and work at it until, until you've got something that you feel good about. If you've got something already, make the drive up here and let's, let's lay it down. It's just hard drive space. So uh, let, let's, uh, let's make it happen. Uh, we desperately need good music um, and we need original music that, uh, that comes from you and comes from the heart. So, and it Randy, just begins. So it begins with play. Just play around. Yeah, you know, if you don't, 
if, if you don't play around with it, it may not happen. So find some time to play. Yeah. I used to have an instructor who said, we call it playing for a reason. Uh, yeah. it's, uh, it, it is that. Randy, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, anytime we can have you as a part of our fellowship, um, it's going to be, uh, we're, we're going to take that chance. So, it's good so to thank be you so much friends. for being here to do this. Yeah. yeah. Can I uh, say a word of prayer for us? All right. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We pray, Lord, that you will uh, 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 just bless us, that uh, the things that we have heard uh, this evening, um, you, would, you would keep in our mind, uh, uh, keep in our hearts as we're coming to be creative uh, and to uh, uh, put our thoughts down and put our, our um, experiences down to paper, that, that you would um, help us to be really mindful of, of all of these things that will help us in our craft. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless us now as we go. Bring us back again together tomorrow as we conclude this workshop. And in your name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, guys.